Genetics falsifies evolution. In this video, we show that genetics confirms natural barriers to evolution. These barriers falsify naturalistic mega-evolution by preventing the extrapolation of microevolution to mega-evolution. This means that random chance and natural selection cannot create the entire biosphere, including formation of completely new body plants and new phyla. We will briefly summarize eight lines of evidence that support this fact. 1. The scientific literature confirms that mega-evolution is not just microevolution plus time. 2. Natural limits to evolution. 3. Limits to random chance. 4. Limits to natural selection. 5. Harmful mutational limits. 6. Orphan gene limits. 7. Morphological limits. 8. Gradualism has been falsified. Each limit is the result of a barrier. And each limit confirms the presence of a barrier. The barriers are, a. Biofunctional information chasms. b. Orphan gene chasms. c. Protein isolation chasms. d. Random chance material resource barriers. e. Random chance temporal resource barriers. f. Cost of selective substitution. g. Time for selective substitution. h. Morphological chasms. All of these confirm that microevolution cannot be extrapolated to megaevolution to create the entire biosphere. 1. Scientific literature. The scientific literature confirms that megaevolution is not just microevolution plus time. See our video with the title quoted above. We have provided an example scientific reference in the video. 2. Natural limits to evolution. Scientific evidence shows that there are clear limits to microevolution, adaptation of a species inside a genus or family. Low-level speciation is also microevolution. These natural limits prevent mega-evolution, formation of completely new body plans, and completely new higher taxa, kingdom, phylum, class, order. A variety of experiments and empirical results confirm natural limits to evolution. 1. Artificial breeding of a wide variety of animals. 2. Induced mutation experiments in fruit flies. 3. 60,000 generations of bacterial microevolution experiments. 4. 1 E20 malarial parasites. All of these confirm natural limits to microevolution. Note that low-level speciation, e.g., ring species, is a part of such microevolution. Such low-level speciation does not create completely new body plans, or completely new organ systems, or completely new phyla, or higher taxa, kingdom, phylum, class, order. That is why we distinguish between mega-evolution and microevolution, rather than micro versus macroevolution, since some biologists have muddied the definitions by defining macroevolution as low-level speciation. See the section titled, Limits to Small-Scale Evolution, in the book, God and Evolution, How an Atheist Scientist Changed His Mind, by John M. Kinson. 3. Random Chance Limits. In addition to the above, random chance does not have the number of trials available, in the entire 14 billion year history of the universe, to generate all of the favorable mutations, needed to create the biosphere. We discuss these in the videos listed in the description of this video. 4. Natural Selection Limits. Natural selection does not have the trillions of years needed to substitute and fix all of the needed favorable mutations in genomes needed to create the entire biosphere. We discuss this in the videos listed in the description. 5. Harmful mutational limits. Harmful mutations are 1,000 to 1 million times more numerous than any allegedly beneficial mutations that are typically below experimentally detectable limits for higher, more complex creatures. So, by the time natural selection is able to get rid of each bad mutation, by genetic deaths in the population, thousands to millions of new harmful mutations are generated in the population. So, bad harmful mutations completely swamp the good allegedly beneficial mutations. None of the higher more complex creatures are able to handle the number of genetic deaths needed to get rid of this flood of harmful mutations, compared to allegedly beneficial mutations. The result is no net constructive evolution. Instead, we have increasing genetic load of harmful mutations, that increases from generation to generation. This leads to genetic decay and extinction of the species, and not to the constructive evolution needed for mega-evolution. We discuss this in the videos listed in the description section, of this video, below. 6. Orphan Gene Limits The scientific literature indicates that 10-30% to of genes in the higher taxa, class, order, phylum, kingdom, are orphan genes, i.e., genes with no homologs in other taxa. And, these taxa-specific orphan genes are needed to create the distinguishing features of each of these higher taxa. Random chance, and natural selection, cannot create more than 3 high-specificity genes, and 12 low-specificity genes in the 14 billion year history of the universe. So, any taxonomic family or class or higher taxa that has more than 12 such taxon-specific orphan genes is separated from all other higher taxa by a chasm that cannot be crossed by random chance and natural selection, in the entire 14 billion year history of the universe. So, 
This creates very clear and impassable limits between the higher taxa. 7. Morphological limits. Many scientists have concluded, through the years, that the completely different body plans of the different phyla are so morphologically different that there are no realistic gradualistic and functionally viable pathways for one body plan to evolve into another or for all of these body plans to have gradualistically evolved from a universal common ancestor. 8. Gradualism falsified. See our video titled, Gradualism has been falsified. Conclusion. 1. Genetics shows that there are natural barriers and limits to evolution. These falsify naturalistic mega-evolution by preventing the extrapolation of micro-evolution to mega-evolution. 2. This means that random chance and natural selection cannot create the entire biosphere, including formation of completely new body plans and new phyla. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.